Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing Married at First Sight UK Season 7, Episode 24, if I'm not mistaken. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell, and leave a comment down below. And just a comment about the comments. Guys, everything I say in the videos, it's purely opinion-based. Everything, everything I feel is an opinion, everything you feel is an opinion. At the end of the day, it's a television show. We come here to kiki, to laugh, and to move on. That's all. So this episode is the last commitment ceremony of the season before decision day. Matt and Whitney are first and they let the entire room know how in love with each other they are. I feel like the inside of a baby unicorn. <laughs> Did you just say you've yes, fallen in love with Whitney? Yes, I have 100% fallen in love with this woman. I think that if they had a romantic connection, it should have been explored on the outside. I just wouldn't be concerned about what anyone else is doing. Well, you're with I would just be Zoe. focusing on my own situation. Two different people, aren't we? Two very different people. Some of the other contestants are really salty. And I'm just like, are you mad that they betrayed the process or they disrespected the experts? Or are you upset at the fact that these people have been together in a shorter amount of time, but are expressing more affection for each other? Because a lot of these couples cannot say that they love each other, nor can they see themselves falling for each other in that way. Whereas these people have only been together for a week and some. And they love each other, allegedly. You know? And, and Zoe, Zoe specifically, is just so pressed by Whitney and Matt. And I want to know why. During their... Um, during their segment, Matt calls out Thomas and Adrian for having a fake relationship. We had to work so hard and then someone else choose each other. It's like a slap in the face. And it's really not personal. Your relationship is a complete fabrication. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Yeah. How can you comment on my relationship being a fabrication when you both come in, married to other people, and they decided to get together, and now miraculously after a week you're in love? To have six weeks worth of opinions, and then for Tom to say he's not interested oh. after hearing 30 seconds. This is so okay. boring. Just take it. It's an opinion. You don't have to value it. I don't have to listen to it neither. Mm. All yours. I, I'm sorry. I agree. I agree. I was seeing some of the comments and like you guys like Thomas's like going off at the mouth thing. I don't have a problem with it if he was able to sit there and take it. But when people give any ounce of criticism to his relationship, he just implodes. And I'm just like, no, babe. If you can dish it, you can take it, okay? That's number one. Number two, I do believe this relationship is a farce, honestly. I think Adrian does not want to be there as much as he convinced himself he does want to be there romantically. I, I just, I don't see it. I understand he said he takes a while to warm up and there needs to be more trust and more stability in their relationship, but I think he sees that with Thomas, the relationship would be a ticking time bomb and he doesn't want to be there for when it goes off. April and George had been, you know, going back and forth about the whole long distance thing, the kids, the different lifestyles, but they're feeling a lot better about life outside the experiment. Would you give up your London life to move to where George is? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't to want to do that. We want uh, to want to. <laughs> That's a double positive, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Where are you in the world of love right now? We're not 100% in love. I think we will be there when there's full trust. We're going to see how that works. You know, it's kind of hard to talk about George without talking about the allegations stuff, but I'll try not to comment on it today. I enjoy seeing them not talk about him being so insecure and then her constantly having to reassure him and being exhausted about having to reassure him. You know, I'm glad we're having more of like, okay, we've established that she's here to stay. He's got to, you know, build his own self-confidence because it's not the responsibility of your partner to do that. And they can move past that. They can work on other issues that they have, not the same issue that's just reoccurring. Adrian and Thomas are next and they let the experts know that physical intimacy between them is non-existent. At the end of the day, you have two great friends. No, I don't see Thomas as my friend. To go and have sex, to go and have that connection when it's the oh it's going well it's going really well it's going really fucking well oh and then it's thrown off that's some really really dangerous territory is it that you want adrian to initiate physical yes intimacy yes 
It doesn't have to be sex. I'm not talking about that. I just mean like in bed together, cuddling, that sort of thing. That so doesn't affection. Affect. affection. Start there. I'm not surprised. Like I said, it seems like Thomas has to force Adrian to be physically affectionate to him. Like rarely do I see Adrian initiate a kiss or a handhold or a hug unless he's trying to tame Thomas in uh, moments of conflict. But you know, I think it actually could work between them if Thomas provided something to Adrian. Rarely do I see Adrian, if at all, say, you know what, Thomas is my safe haven. He, he, he's he, like, I don't know, like any kind of reasoning, I don't see Adrian give to us or to even Thomas. But for Thomas, you know, he had like, I mean, so, so many things. He sees past the hard shell. He's able to accept him even through the tantrums. He's um, his sense of peace. He's his rock. He's emotionally available. He's like funny and kind of a doting husband. He likes to care after him. Like there's so much that Adrian does for Thomas. What does Thomas do for Adrian? So basically in this conversation, Adrian had said that Physical intimacy hasn't progressed because he feels like their relationship is too emotionally unstable. They'll have a, a series of good days and then something will happen that'll set them back. And he doesn't want to fully commit in that way with somebody still being on such rocky ground. And so because there, was, there wasn't any intimacy, Thomas decided to leave. However, Adrian's expression of like, no, like I see you in my life forever made Thomas kind of soften up and say, okay, I'm going to stay in the experiment. I think he sees you in his life forever. Absolutely. Just not romantically. And I don't know if that's going to change anytime soon. Sophie and Jonathan were on the couch and Sophie was talking about how her dad wasn't fully a fan of Jonathan, mainly because of the financial differences. That wasn't it. There, there was, there was more to that but I have to give Sophie her props and that she tries her best to protect Jonathan at every corner which is a great attribute for a spouse honestly you want to present as a united front and not be fake about it but just to show your spouse that you have their back in the face of conflict or you know when you're out in public and then you can work out your problems back at home or with a um an unbiased party all that jazz right um I need her to be a little bit more honest about everything her dad was saying because it wasn't just the finances it was also his reckless mouth that he needs to get in check then you had i think uh shanita and jordan no jenna and zoe um they have the same discussion about the long distance and the kids thing it just further emphasizes to me that i don't understand why they were paired together right now children is not a hard no for jenna however i feel like it's going to be I don't think Jenna can see herself raising children with somebody as stubborn as Zoe. On to Shanita and Jordan. They are still having some miscommunication when it comes to where they stand emotionally. When the experiment ends, I don't know, part of me feels like if it got a bit tough, he'd run off. You don't even give me the opportunity though. But I'm just telling you my concerns because there has been times where I have needed Jordan to be a bit more emotionally supportive. You know, Shanita, girl, you me same, she has a tendency to think for Jordan and that's not fair. You know, when somebody um, says something or even doesn't say something, allow them the opportunity to elaborate. Don't just think, oh, you said this, which must mean that this is what you mean. And he's like, you didn't even give me an opportunity to really fully express or to even exemplify what I was talking about. And that's unfair in a relationship. On top of that, she says she wants more emotional support from Jordan. However, when Jordan expresses some kind of concern, the first thing she does is run to the worst case scenario. And if you're gonna ask for emotional support from him, you need to be able to provide it for him. Last but not least, we have Keisha and Kwame. Keisha expresses her displeasure with Kwame and how he handled the homestays, but basically the experiment as a whole. I've revealed myself, you know, I've taken Kwame back home. And as time goes on and you're getting to know someone more, you want more to kind of be revealed. Every corner of my story, when I spoke, Kwame intervened and made a joke or whatever. I don't know what joke it is that I said, but from that, I saw a serious side and I kind of feel like the homestays is just suddenly bringing out some things. You are the king of managing your emotions. 
Okay. You know? And guess what? That's a great way to grow a business or to grow a brand, but that's a horrible way to grow love. Kwame is absolutely delusional because this man really thinks that, you know, Keisha is springing up these things to him that she's never expressed to him, uh, that there's a discourse in their relationship and all this stuff. She has called you out on being emotionally unavailable time and time again. And all you do, instead of reassuring her that you are emotionally available to her, is like you laugh in moments of vulnerability, you sugarcoat the problems that you're going through, you might want to retreat from the marriage or kind of spin the narrative and stuff. It's just further, it's further solidifying her opinion that y'all, y'all don't work. He's not emotionally available, at least to her or for her. So she decides to leave. He wrote stay. However, he said he was not going to put her in a position to feel uncomfortable because at the end of the day, he does respect her, even though he doesn't respect being blindsided. What is this blindside, Kwame? You have not opened up to this woman from the beginning. Like truly, I think they've opened up on a friendship level, but in terms of building a long lasting relationship, he hasn't let her in. And that was never gonna be conducive for a marriage, at least a healthy one. So I commend Keisha for saying, listen, enough is enough. I'm leaving. I love every single one of you. It's an open door policy when it comes to me. However, for my peace, I'm a peace out. I'm with you, sis, because Kwame, he was never going to be it. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys. Uh, brain fart. Whoa, how do I end videos? Like, comment, share, subscribe. Yeah, something like that. Goodbye, y'all.